This little box may be the only computer case that's made with flax fiber composite panels. Hi, I'm Roman and in this video I'll show you how I built this small form factor mini ITX computer case. The case features a front I.O. with two USB 3 connectors as well as a headphone and microphone jack. It also features a drive bay which can hold up to three 2.5 inch solid state drives. It can be placed vertically or horizontally which makes it very versatile to use. The design is based on a central panel where all components are mounted to. The graphics card by the use of a riser cable. The assembly of the case is based on magnets, doesn't require any tools and is very quick. When placed vertically, it is 19 cm high, 15 cm wide and 32 cm deep which results in a volume of only 9.1 liters. At 1.54 kg it is also extremely lightweight. It also has a unique trick up its sleeve, which I'll show you later. The raw materials for this build were 2mm thick aluminum angle sections, half of them with a radius of 5mm for the corner pieces of the case. I also used some flat aluminum sheets and flax. Flax produces some of the strongest natural fibers with a stiffness of around 60 GPa, which is comparable to glass fibers. These remarkable mechanical properties make it perfectly suited to produce very stiff biocomposite parts. The flax panels were made with vacuum infusion. I infused a panel of roughly 1 square meter with epoxy resin. This footage is sped up by a hundred times. The whole infusion process took about 40 minutes. After letting the epoxy cure for about 48 hours at room temperature, I cut the panels roughly to shape and ended up with 2 mm thick pieces that looked like this. Of course I needed some additional parts for the case. The front I.O., standoffs for the motherboard and the graphics card, a power button, magnets, self-adhesive rubber feet, a power cable, a motherboard power cable and LEDs, and finally a PCIe riser cable for the graphics card. You can find links to all the parts that I use for this build in the description below. I started with making the brackets for the SSD bay and the power supply from 2mm thick aluminum sheets, which I had to bend to a 90 degree angle and then cut them to the right size with a miter saw. Next, I made the necessary cutouts and drilled the required holes for mounting the brackets. I used an MDF scrap board to mark the position of all the main components such as the motherboard and the riser cable as well as the power supply and the SSD bay. I also marked the cutouts that were going to be needed for efficiently routing the cables since cable management is most critical in such a small case. I temporarily screwed all components onto the mock-up to determine the overall dimensions and verify that the positioning was correct. This was a necessary step because the placement had to be perfect and allowed for no measurement errors. Furthermore, I was able to fine-tune the positioning of all the components such as the SSD bay. I went on to cut the flex composite panels to size and sand it down the edges for a smooth finish. I copied all the cutouts and the position of the holes onto the middle and back panels. I first drilled the holes and then made the cutouts with a small router for which I made an aluminum jig. This worked really well to make the cutouts very precisely. When all the machining was done, the pieces finally looked like this. Of course they were not quite finished yet. As you notice, the outside panels are still solid, which wouldn't allow for any ventilation of the case to cool the computer components. So I went ahead and printed the grid with the desired spacing for the holes which I glued onto a piece of MDF. 
Then I started drilling 4.5 mm holes with a wood drill, which, thanks to its pointy tip, allowed me to drill the holes very precisely. I then used the MDF panel to transfer all the holes onto the flax fiber composite plates. To stop the plates from moving, I used double sided tape and also drilled pilot holes in the corners and used additional drills to interlock the plates. After drilling 1712 holes in total, the plates looked like this. Next up it was time to work on the aluminum corner profiles. I first cut them to length. The length had to be very carefully cut because the pieces would join in the corners. I also drilled some 11mm holes right in the corners of the pieces. What they were needed for you'll see in a moment. Some additional work was required for the piece that was going to hold the front I.O. I marked the position of the front connectors as well as the soldering points and drilled the holes before carefully removing the rest of the material with a small file until the final piece looked like this. And the other pieces looked like this. You notice the three small pieces in the middle. They are the ones that are going to hold the graphics card in place. Now everything that was left to do to finish the pieces was adding a nice finishing layer of lacquer. After sanding the pieces, the flex panels got two layers of two component high gloss lacquer which would give them a nice and shiny look and protect the surface. The aluminum parts got a green layer of matte paint. I chose this color because it matches really well with the natural brown of the composite panels. Finally, all the puzzle pieces were ready for assembly. The angle sections had to be glued to the front and back panel, which in turn had to be joined with the middle panel to create the basic structure of the case. I joined them with fast reacting two component glue. By scratching the glue surfaces first, I gave the glue a chance to make a mechanical connection with all the pieces. All parts had to be very accurately placed to allow for a perfect fit later on. I had to force the bracket slightly apart to be able to insert the middle panel and secure it with a clamp. I used a 90 degree bracket to make sure the pieces were in the right position. I also glued the little brackets in place where the GPU screwed into and the one on the bottom for it to slide in. Comparing the final structure and cutouts with the mock-up shows quite some differences. While the back plates look almost the same, I made some changes to the middle plate which should help with keeping the temperatures of the CPU and GPU as low as possible. So back to the 11mm holes I drilled earlier. They are of course for the magnets that attach the panels to the basic structure. The magnets have a diameter of 10mm and a thickness of 1.7mm which was the perfect size. So what I had to do was gluing the magnets onto the inside of the panels using the holes in the aluminum pieces as a guide for accurate placement. The metallic pieces needed for the magnets to stick to I cut from a 0.5mm thick metal sheet, spray painted them and glued them onto the angle sections to cover the holes. To connect the power button to the motherboard I ordered this cable which besides the power button and power LED also included the HDD LED and the reset switch. Because my button featured a built-in LED I needed to cut the cables. I used this opportunity to shorten the cable to the required length and remove the reset switch. I then soldered the power button and LEDs back onto the ends. Here are all the pieces that were finally ready to be put together. The basic frame, the top and bottom panels, the side panels, the feet, the GPU bracket, the SSD bay, the PSU bracket as well as all the cables. I prepared the front I.O. panel by inserting the power button in its hole and securing it with the nut from the back. Next up was the front I.O. which I secured with two countersunk screws from the back. The rest of the assembly was very quick. The power cable and the riser cable had to be screwed into place. For the riser cable I used long screws that went through the spacer and were secured with a nut from the back. This helps for a secure mount as quite some pressure is needed to insert the graphics card. The SSD bay is also simply screwed to the case with two screws. For the sake of completion I also added the power supply bracket 
but this will have to be removed again to insert the PSU. Last but not least was the GPU bracket, which of course also needs to be removed again to mount the graphics card. Now for the feet, I simply used four self-adhesive rubber pads that I stuck onto four additional magnets. This is a very simple solution and allows the feet to be attached to the case in vertical or horizontal position. Of course I made sure to arrange all magnets with the right polarity before gluing them to the panels. Now what's with the special feature that I mentioned in the beginning? Instead of gluing the bracket with the front I.O. and the part on the opposite side to the case, I also drilled holes and attached them with magnets. This allows the front I.O. to be placed on either the left or the right side of the case. The cables can simply be routed through the cutout below the PSU, which is also for the SSD data cables. Since this is such a small case, it will most likely be sitting on the desk and depending on which side it is placed, the appropriate side of the front I.O. can be chosen for easy access. I think that's a pretty cool feature. Of course this is an advantage for mounting long graphics cards as well. When the bracket is being removed, the case allows for cheap use with a length of up to 31.5 cm or 12.5 inches. It was finally time to install the computer parts. And I must say that working in this case was a pleasure because everything is very accessible despite its small size. Editing this video was the first task I did with the new case and I'm very happy with the performance. I also very much like the natural look of the flex fiber composite panels in combination with the green accents. Building this tiny yet very versatile case was great fun and I can only encourage you to try it for yourself. I'd appreciate any feedback and thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you for the next project. Until next time, goodbye.